Hey everyone, Robert here, and today I have a video over the best bang for your buck. My local supermarket had a pretty good special on some ground beef. One of the specials was one of the big long 10 pound chubs, $73.27 for $1.49 a pound. I found 80.20 reduced because it was going out of date for $2.99 a pound, regularly for $29 a pound, and then I found 90.10, $3.99 a pound, regularly $5.29 a pound. So I bought one of each so I could do a test to see how much you actually get once it cooks down. So that's what I'm doing today. The 7327 is from the big long chub that comes into the supermarket as is. The other two were packaged at the supermarket. So I don't know how they make it up. I don't know if they take something down from a big chub and package it in smaller packages. I don't know that. And I don't know the amount of slime, if they even use the pink slime and stuff anymore or what, or if there's any kind of fillers. So basically I'm just going by fat content on this video. So come along and watch the meat parade. This is one pound, as you can see right here, of 7327 ground beef. This is part of my test to see which is a better value. Here are my samples, 7327. And my 8020 and my 9010. I pre-weighed these all to be one pound each and I have for you the corresponding prices and all the fun information, so here I go. Okay, I'm gonna brown up this ground beef and when it's finished browning, I'm going to strain off the fat and then I'm going to measure how much liquid fat is in a measuring cup for each one pound portion of ground beef. Okay, here is the 7327 the 80-20 and the 90-10. Here is the ground beef browning up. This is the 90-10 and you can see just by looking that there is considerably less fat in there. The 73-27 and then the 80-20. Um, okay, so I'm going to be anxious to see how much actual fat pours off and how much meat we have remaining after this. I have consistently cooked all three pans of meat between six and seven. Now, of course, the pans are not the same types of pans, so I don't necessarily have consistency there, but I do have consistency with the temperature and stuff. I've got the ground beef all browned up. I'm going to strain it all for one minute each, so that's kind of a similar thing to where all of the fat is dra uh, drained off for one minute, so it's all kind of a consistent thing that I'm going to measure how much fat is left over, and then I'm going to measure how much meat is actually left over. I'm gonna start here with the 7327. I'm going to set my kitchen timer here. Kitchen timer, one minute. And then once I get this poured in, I'm going to start the timer. So we'll just let this grain off for a minute. Then I will pour off the grease and put the meat in another bowl. Here is the grease that is left over from the 7327. Not very much, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in this. So, and I'm just gonna pour it out. I'm not going to try to, you know, get it all out. Just kind of let it run off for a minute. And I'm just going to mark, I think, on the glass, on the cup measuring cup how much if it doesn't get to an actual level. Okay, so you can see where it is here. So I'm gonna put this down on here and I'm just going to make a line right along here. Eh, that's it's about an eighth of a cup. For the 7327. Here is the 80 I'm gonna pour off. Start the kitchen timer. Let it sit for a minute. Just let it drain by itself to kind of be kind of consistent across the board. And then I'm gonna measure the fat and then put it in a dish, 
and then measure and see how much ground beef we have left. Here is the 80-20. There's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I don't even know if we'll be able to get enough in there to even make a mark. Hmm. That was higher. So, uh, yeah. Register. It doesn't really register. Now, when I looked up other studies on this, they rinsed the ground beef and all of that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to straight up measure how much ground beef we actually have after we're finished. And the last one, the 90-10, you know, I showed you a picture. Oops, it's kind of stuck. I showed you a picture of it while it was cooking, and it was considerably less fat content as it was cooking. So I can already tell that there is much less fat left over after the cooking process than the other ones. I guess I would have expected a heck of a lot more fat out of the 80-20, the 7327. I know, it is kind of interesting. Here is the 90-10. I'm just going to put it in this bowl here. And again, I tried to be somewhat consistent. This, of course, is not any kind of a super scientific experiment. Basically, it's just kind of a fun thing to do to see how much bang for your buck you're getting when your local market, at least the local market around here, has a sale. And again, I think this is somewhat similar to what was with the 80-20, but we'll go ahead and pour it in here, and you can see that the fat is pretty negligible. For the final step, I have my uh, kitchen scale here. I'm going to put this bowl on here. You can see right here, I'm going to tear it out. So you can see the well, scale. Don't damage it. <laughs> so you can see that the scale does register one, uh, zero. So this is the 7327. And so we have 10.4 ounces of cooked ground beef. And you started with 16, right? And of course I did. I started with one pound, which is 16 ounces. Okay. So this is 10.4 ounces. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour this back in here. Clean this out a little bit. It's nice and clean. You should have 2.07. Put this on here. It's, it's already teared out to zero, you can see. Here's the 80-20. Put this on. This shows 11.9 ounces 80 on the 80 20. Mm. Okay, put this in. Get this cleaned out There's again. Side too. Okay, should be 2.7, should weigh out to zero. It does. And now for the 90 10, pour this in. And we have, huh, interesting, 11.1 ounces, or actually, yeah, 11.1 ounces for the 90-10. Well, it went up to 11.2. So 11.2 ounces. Now, if you're looking at bang for your buck on this, it'll be, I'll have to do numbers on it because I don't know. Or the 73.27 was a special for $1.49 a pound. <clears throat> We got 10.4 ounces of cooked meat out of that. We had, and this was reduced. The 80-20 was $2.99 a pound, normally $4.29 a pound, 11.9 ounces of cooked beef, and then the 90-10, $5.29 a pound, regularly $3.99 a pound for reduced, and we have 11.2 ounces. That's a kind of a curious notion there. You would think that unless there's some kind of odd, weird thing off with my numbers, that your 90-10 would have more cooked beef. Okay, 1.49 divided by 10.4. Okay, that's coming up to 0.143. Okay, 14 cents an ounce for the 73.27. Okay, so the 80-20, I had 11.9 at 2.99. So 2.99 divided by 11.9. That is 0.251. So 25 cents an ounce. Um, 3.99 divided by 11.2 equals 0.356. 35 cents an ounce. Okay, if I did my math correctly, and I teach social studies, not math, but I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> the better bang for your buck 
on the meat fest would be to go ahead and buy the 7327 at $1.49 a pound when they run that big of a special. Um, I've always had people say, you're wasting your money when you buy 7327. Because you're buying so much fat. Because you're buying so much fat. But, <clears throat> you know, this isn't a scientific study. It was just me, you know, trying to figure out, hey, let's see if this really is a real thing. Uh, the reason why we picked up all of this ground beef is because we want to can it. I like to, uh, as I've said before in videos, if I find cheap meat, I love cheap meat and I cannot lie and I buy it like crazy. Fortunately, we have a freezer right now. and You other canners can't deny. <laughs> you other canners can't deny. So I usually buy it up as much as I can afford, put it in the freezer, and then on one Saturday afternoon, I give it a can. And so I bought 80 pounds worth of this $1.49 um, ground beef that I'm gonna be canning. I do not know, again, how my supermarket processes the other ground beef that was in the individual packages. I just know that the 10 pound packages came in the pre-packaged chubs from whatever meat place they get them from. I don't know what kinds of meat they use to grind up and make their own ground beef or even if they do it. I only know 7327, 8020, and 9010 and that's what I based my experiment on. So my results are by the cheap meat. Each ship is doing a taste test to see which one of these ground beefs has the best flavor. He's going to start with the 7327. That's right, because no matter how much you save or whatever bang you get for your buck, it would taste nasty. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be buying it. Well, true, but if you're mixing it with something like chili, can you tell? This is 7327. Does it feel fatty to you? No, but like a lot of ground beef, it's got that little bit of chewiness to it because of the, you know, gristle and stuff that's in it naturally. <clears throat> um, let me see. This is the 8020. Tastes about the same as the 7327. And this is the, what was it, 90? 9010. 9010. Not as chewy as a 7327 and it does taste a little bit more beef like or steak like than the 7327 but really the difference is almost not noticeable. So in terms of canning it uh, in reading things they said to drain it rinse it and all of that. Do when you, you can it? Mm -hmm. They went ahead and said give it a rinse with some hot water to rinse some of the fat off because you don't want to can any meat with that high of a fat content. Why? Because of the fat content. I can't imagine canning ground beef without any fat in it. I mean, because when you go to heat it up, you rely on that fat a little bit to, you know, in reheating and cooking and things like that. So, I don't know, to me, canning ground beef without any fat in it, you know, rinsing all the fat out of it would be kind of not fun. When we've canned ground beef before, one time we cold packed and one time we hot packed it. You always wind up with a little bit of fat on top of them, on top of the meat in the jar. And I thought that was, in a way, I guess I just thought that was normal. I'd have to look up and find out, maybe there are some of our viewers who can tell us why what the advantage is to canning it without the fat and why you would want to rinse it because that would seem to me to take away some of the flavor. But then maybe the fat goes rancid. The less fat would make the meat can the canned meat last longer because mm -hmm. the fat would rot go uh, would spoil before the meat. Maybe so. Anyway, let's see what our viewers know. Maybe you can tell us. Thanks for viewing. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. 
and uh, feel free to reach back to us with any questions about anything you've heard. Mm -hmm.